from Beijing University of Technology and CNRS uh, Grenoble. Uh, she's going to talk about optimal observer-based output feedback controller for traffic congestion with Botlenet. So thank you very much, uh, Lina. Thank you. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Lina Guan. Uh, the, to the, the title of my talk is uh, uh, Optimal Observer Based uh, Output Feedback Controller for Traffic Congestion with Botnik. Um, this is this a, jo a joint job uh, work with uh, Li Guozhang and uh, his dog here. Um, uh, firstly, I will in, uh, uh, present, uh, present the outline. The first part is the uh, context. The second part is the contributions of the uh, of this work. Uh, the third part is about the content, and uh, the last part last part is the um, it's about the ongoing work at present. Um, for the for the third for the third part. Content it includes a uh, traffic flow uh, system and a control problem, a uh, full state feedback controller, observer design and uh, output feedback controller, and uh, optimal uh, controller and uh, numerical studies. Uh, first, first the context traffic congestion uh, resulting from traffic breakdown is a uh, um, Ubiquitous, ubiquitous um, problem uh, that in, um, that uh, caused the increase of the fuel consumption and unsafe driving condition. Uh, in the real world, uh, in the in the real world, the first uh, the traffic breakdown um, can be uh, is usually caused by three factors: um, high traffic demand bottlenecks and disturbance caused by individual drivers. Uh, the high traffic demand is the flow uh, indicating, indicating the potential areas uh, uh, average um, flow on the main road and exceeding the uh, capacity of bottlenecks. The most uh, bottlenecks uh, include, uh, include, uh, include uh, Flow, con uh, flow conserving, uh, flow conserving bottlenecks, uh, and uh, uh, no and no uh, uh, flow conserving bottlenecks, such as uh, such as on ramp, on ramp or off ramp bottlenecks. Um, um, all, um, uh, all the temporary or permanent permanent uh, bottlenecks. Um, um, such as uh, um, uh, such as such as the the blocking effect uh, caused by uh, accidents or traffic lights. Um, the local the local disturbance are caused by individual individual drivers, uh, such as uh, abrupt um, um, such as abrupt uh, um, land changes. Or other anticipated actions. There are several macroscopic traffic models. Um, uh, for example, for uh, first order LW model, second order PW model, and uh, the second order ARZ model. Um, for this work, we use the second order ARZ model. Um, the method of design a boundary control law. Um, um, it includes uh, it includes the uh, uh, spectral analysis, the for method, and the backstepping method. Uh, um, for this work, for this work, we use the backstepping method to design an observer-based output feedback controller to uh, to um, to um, for the for the traffic breakdown to dissolve the traffic congestion. Uh, the backstepping method is the extension of uh, uh, water, water uh, integral trans, uh, transformation. 
uh, integral integral uh, integral transformation, and can be used and okay. uh, and can and can be and can be used to uh, sorry. Uh, and, and and it can and it can and it can be uh, can be used to uh, systematically design uh, controller and observers for linear PTEs. Uh, for the uh, infinite uh, uh, dimensional system, the controller and the uh, observers um, can be derived uh, directly, and all the analysis can can be done um, without this creationization. Uh, before the implementation on a computer. Uh, the backstepping method is, uh, uh, method is initially introduced for hyperbolic uh, uh, PDS by characteristic um, Smith-Lea Smith Smith uh, Gong, and uh, there, are some, there are some theoretical results. Um, this part is uh, is about the contributions of uh, of this work. Uh, it's the first work to design uh, an optimal observer based output feedback control of the traffic breakdown to remove a weakened a uh, weakened effect of high traffic demand. Uh, that the traffic demand uh, is acted uh, acts acts as the uh, time varying distance input. Um, uh, uh, at, at the fastest convergence rate. Uh, we did a controller and uh, an observer respectively with a time depending uh, integral term to reject the uh, disturbance. Um, for the, uh, for, um, for proving the, um, um, we use the Lyapunov method to uh, prove the uh, input um, integral input to state the stability of the PDES target system. Uh, that, uh, that system is with the uh, P, uh, MPI boundary control strategy. Um, the last one, the last uh, contributions contribution is uh, inspired, uh, inspired by the um, Ascension 2019. Uh, we compute the kernels of a backstepping uh, transformation using uh, using a uh, general expression of the kernel uh, functions, um, thanks to the MATLAB code uh, in that book. Um, uh, for the content, the first section is about the traffic flow system and control program. The ARD traffic flow uh, model is is typically is typically a uh, Macro, macroscopic traffic flow, uh, traffic flow um, composed of uh, continuity and continuity and uh, uh, acceleration, acceleration equations. Um, here, uh, the row XD is the traffic density, VSD is the mean uh, speed, X and T are independent uh, variable. Um, the speed uh, adaptation time to um, is a constant and uh, corresponds to the inverse of uh, agility. And the speed is speed, uh, the, the steady speed, the steady state speed V V0 um, is, uh, is, the is the density speed release given by Gerencio's model. Here Vf is the free flow speed. Row M is the maximum maximum density. Uh, the traffic the traffic pressure uh, P row is the is an increasing function of the density row. Um, uh, in order to in order to um oh, um beyond beyond the um, beyond the Beyond the determinant, the determinant, determinist, sorry, uh, in order to increase the uh, efficiency and the stability, we solve the optimal control problem of the high traffic demand 
a uh, by ramp metering with a botanic and disturbance. Uh, uh, we consider we consider a road a road segment with a constant uh, density road start out and uh, a speed drop at the at the um, at the upstream inlet of the botanic. Um, uh, on the basis of uh, uh, flow conservation, uh, we um, we can derive the uh, QN star, QN star plus the row ramp star uh, plus the UT plus the P bar, P bar T is equal to, is equal to row zero T multiply V zero T. Here um, Q star ramp is the steady state on ramp flow. Um, row in star is the steady state inflow, uh, such that the row in uh, star plus row ramp star is equal to uh, row star zero uh, multiply v star zero. Uh, and the p bar t and the p bar t is the unknown disturbance of the inflow. Um, uh, we set the model output where t uh, is equal to uh, with zero t minus v star zero, uh, the u uh, the control the controller u t is implemented by on ramp metering. On uh, ramp metering, uh, can um, temporarily can temporarily um, reduce the throughput, uh, uh, the traffic throughput, and uh, delay to uh, increase. Uh, yeah, uh, they need to they need to increase it uh, to prevent uh, uh, the traffic breakdown and uh, associate uh, uh, congestion. Um, we um, uh, we compute we compute uh, the uh, optimal gains of the uh, UT um, to um, um, uh, to uh, to um, sorry. Um, uh, denote 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 V star X and V uh, V star X um, as um, a steady state. Uh, we can derive the we can derive the cosine deviation system omega tilde uh, V tilde, um, and uh, we can derive the character uh, characteristic 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 uh, 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 velocity lambda one and lambda two. Here the lambda one is positive and the lambda two is negative. Uh, because of we consider because of we consider the um, the control problem in the contrast uh, uh, region uh, in this work. Um, um, through the coordinate transformation, epsilon one is equal to um, per one x, x uh, omega. Uh, tilter, uh, tilter, um, and uh, omega and uh, omega epsilon two is equal to um, per c x per c two x we tilter. Uh, we can we can derive the linearized system epsilon one epsilon two. Um, here the lambda one and the lambda two are um, um, positive, and the q one q two and the kappa are no parameters. Uh, this section, uh, we uh, uh, we uh, we uh, we want to derive the full state feedback uh, controller by using the backstepping method. Uh, firstly, we introduce a target system. Um, oh, um, here the here the the key I the parameter key I is an integral to um, tuning tuning parameter. Um, uh, first, uh, first, uh, uh, we use um, um, the term, the term one. Uh, we, we, um, in term one, we, we prove the integral input to state stability of the target system. Assume there exists a positive constants, uh, mu set p1, p2, p, p4, q, q3, q4, and uh, constant p3. Such that for all x in zero L, um, M1x is positive, 
but then there is a positive constant omega one B one such that for any zero, the initial condition, um, and uh, for any the p bar, the distance, um, the solution J to the uh, target system satisfied the following inequality for all the T. Uh, we we introduced the we in, we introduced the first the backstepping transformation to map the to map the linearized the uh, linearized system um, epsilon one epsilon two into the target system alpha bit. Um, uh, we um, uh, take take the time derivative and the spatial derivative um, on the backstepping transformation. We can derive the uh, kernel equations for the G11, G12, G21, and G22 uh, in the in the triangle do, in the triangular domain. Um, and uh, we also can derive the uh, full state feedback control uh, control law UT. Thanks to the inter uh, invertibility of the backstepping uh, transformation. Um, the linearized the linearized system inherits inherits the um, input the integral input to the stability of the target system. Um, the next step uh, we we design an observer and uh, the out and derive the uh, output of, uh, feedback controller. Um, we we designed the observer for uh, for the estimation estimation of the um, of the linearized system state epsilon one and epsilon two. Um, uh, yeah, um, here the R X and the S X are the output injection gains. L I is the is an integral to parameter. Um, uh, the, inter the integral term is added to reject the uh, disturbance to guarantee the convergence of the estimated state to the uh, real state. Uh, from, the, from the linearized system and the observer system, we can derive the arrow system. Uh, we introduced the second backstepping uh, Backstepping transformation uh, to map the target to map the target system um, alpha beta into the arrow system on um, epsilon one tilde, um, epsilon two tilde. Um, um, similarly, we we'll, um, take time take time derivative and spatial derivative on the backstepping uh, transformation. We can derive the Kernel equations um, uh, of the FIGRS X C uh, in the triangle uh, domain T, and uh, we can also derive the integral. Uh, uh, we can derive the uh, the mathematical expression of the inta uh, injection gains R X and S X. Mm, um, uh, the sum the sum two is is for the uh, is for is is about the um, integral input to input to state stability of the arrow system, and the assumption of the sum one, uh, consider the arrow system and the function R X and S X. The equilibrium is in, is integral input to state uh, stability uh, stable. In the L2 sense, that is there is just positive constant constants omega 2 P2, such that for any uh, initial condition in L2 norm, in L2 space, and for any P bar, um, the, solu the solution the solution to the arrow system satisfied the following uh, inequality. Um, Combined, combined, a combined observer system and the full state feedback controller, we can derive the observer based output feedback controller UT. Well, we can we we can see we can see from the expression uh, mathematical expression of the UT. Um, here 
um, the epsilon epsilon one epsilon epsilon one hat epsilon two hat uh, can be derived from can be computed from the uh, observer system, um, and uh, the kernels G one one G one two G two one and uh, the G two two uh, can be computed um, can be computed from the kernel equations of of the and the Q, Q1, Q2 are unknown uh, parameters. So, so, uh, so we can, so we can derive that uh, um, if we, we want to derive the optimal control UT, we need to derive, we need to seek the optimal value of the Ki. Um, the theorem, the theorem three, it's about the input, uh, uh, integrate input to state the state of the closed loop system. Under the assumptions of the theorem, two one, theorem, theorem one, for any the initial condition, um, the observer based, observer based output feedback controller makes the equilibrium of the linearized system and the error system input in, uh, in, integrate input to state uh, stability stable in the atomness, uh, yeah, atom stance. Uh, that is, there exists positive constant omega-3, B3, such that along the source into the uh, linearized system for any the disturbance P bar, such uh, it's uh, um, the following equality um, holds for all the T. Uh, for this, uh, for the, pro um, for the proof of this theorem, we used we used the separate we used the separation principle, uh, because uh, uh, because the, the separation principle was not used uh, for the uh, for the um, infinite dimensional system. Um, the last the last section is the optimal controller and the numerical standards. Um, a big, uh, uh, because uh, we want to uh, derive the, uh, uh, the optimal uh, controller, so we uh, etablished the opti uh, optimization, optimization problem. Maximum of the seat can be considered to derive the optimal, optimal value of the Ki. Um, that, is, that is the optimal uh, controller, UT. Um, the max, the, the max seat subject to new seat P1, P2, P4, Q3, Q4. Uh, they are uh, positive and the M1X is positive for all the X in zero L. Um, the key, uh, the parameters Ki state mu uh, can be given uh, using the Lancer's method and uh, uh, the P1, P2, P3, P4 can um, can um, can be solved using um, um, can be um, can be can be attained can be attained by solving the um, linear linear matrix inequalities. Um, in order in order to validate the performance of the uh, the the degenerate observer based on the output feedback controller. Um, uh, we um, we use um, we need uh, we need to do the numerical simulations. Um, the parameters um, P bar T and omega star x uh, V star x is uh, are given. We compute the controllers for the linear red system and simulate the nonlinear. No model. Uh, we can derive the, uh, from the figure, the first figure, uh, we can see uh, the evolution of the observer based uh, output feedback controller UT. Uh, the second figure, from the se second figure, we can see that um, um, the, state, the state of the closed loop system um, uh, can, can, work to, can work to the uh, converts to a steady state zero um, uh, with the uh, with the design output feedback controller. Um, 
and uh, we uh, from the third from the third third figure, um, uh, it's a um, that's a figure about the roadway, the density and the uh, uh, speed. Um, it's it's the state, it's the state of the nonlinear system. So from this figure, we can see um, the degenerate output fit, uh, uh, the degenerate observer based uh, uh, output feedback controller for the linear for the for the linear rise for the linear rise system uh, can they de can derive the nonlinear system in the same way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions or comments? Yes, I have a question. Me? Yes, please, I'm Robin. Um, hi, so thank you very much. This was very interesting. Um, my question is, uh, so, so you say that you were testing your, your, the, the controller you obtained of the linear system then on the nonlinear system. And, and I guess everything should work uh, locally. Uh, you should have the local stability on the nonlinear system. Um, but compared to, to other uh, hyperbolic systems, uh, tra traffic system have the characteristic of, um, um, if you want to stabilize them in practice, having la like large variation or, or often non, non classical solutions. Uh, do you think your approach could help um, uh, solving the stabilization problem? When you have solutions that are not not classical, like with discontinuities or shocks, or uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> could you please could you please repeat your question? Um, yeah, so, so so basically, in um, what you're showing now is is a result that uh, allows on, on the traffic flow. Uh, to to stabilize the system once the when when the, the, the initial perturbations are not too too high on the real nonlinear system I imagine mm -hmm. and uh, my question will be if if you had uh, and, and then you have on you are in, in congested regime um, if if you had a system where you have sometimes um, high perturbations because you already have stop and go waves and so the system is uh, at some some part of the system is in free flow and some part is in congested regime. Uh, do you, and then the solutions are not uh, C one anymore. They're probably BV or, or, or at least discontinuous. Do you think there would be a way to adapt this method to to stabilize the system in this case as well? No, sorry. Um, I don't. I, I never think about it. Okay, okay. that's still an open. Uh, 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 thank you for your uh, thank you for your question. I was curious about. So thank Somebody you. Else? I I have a, a question. So you you can stabilize your system like in page your slide in page nineteen. So you have um, this Thank exponential. You. Oh, oh. Oh, there. Okay. That's, uh, no. Yes, I, I ask if uh, you can uh, have a gain. That is, if you have theta, can you construct it large enough, as large as you want, or you have a maximum? In the slide 16, please. There, there, here, here, it's okay. So you have this E exponential to minus theta times T. Yes? Yes. So can you uh, modify the value of theta in the exponential? You don't know. Sorry. No? Uh, you mean this, this term? No, 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 the first time, the, the exponential term. The here, the exponential, so you have e to the minus theta 
T. Yes, yeah. Can you change the value? Can you choose the value of theta? Uh, oh, uh, uh, actually, actually uh, for the simulation, uh, uh, I, I use the, I use the lesser method for the, for the theta, mm -hmm. for, set, for setting the theta. And uh, yes, actually uh, the value, the value of it, uh, its value is, it's given. It's given, it's given. You, cannot, yes. you cannot modify it. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I just, uh, I just uh, use the, uh, the linear, uh, uh, showing, showing the LMS for the, for the P1, P2, P3, uh, not for the exponential rate, theta. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other question? Okay, if not, we can thank you again and we continue with the next speaker, please. Thank you. So, Ma Marco, can you? And the first slide, because I don't remember the name of your talk. <laughs> okay. So we thank, uh, we present now Marco Anton Orsoni uh, from Université de Bordeaux, and he's going to talk um, the reachable space of the heat equation. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank also all the organizers. Um, it's a pleasure uh, to give this talk. Uh, this uh, webinar. So um, I said I will talk about the reachable space of the heat equation and uh, it's a joint work with uh, Andreas Hartmann. So I will... okay. uh, maybe I will pass in Chaporama. Okay, so can you see my, my screen now? Yes, perfect. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, the talk will, is be, will be as, as follows. So I will first uh, speak about uh, the ritual space. I will uh, define the problem and uh, give the known results. Then I will speak about the another problem, uh, the separation of singularities problem, uh, which is a problem from uh, complex analysis, but which, lead, which leads to a solution of the initial problem. And uh, finally, I will talk about the reachable space of another parabolic equation. <coughs> okay, so let me let me speak about the, the initial control problem. So we consider the, the one dimensional equation on the interval zero pi uh, with a boundary control at both ends. It's a directly control and with a, an initial condition f. And so for every control u in L2 and any initial condition f in this sublet space, uh, this heat equation admits uh, a unique solution, which is continuing in time and uh, with values uh, in the sublet space. Uh, so let me give some de definition. I will say that the function is, uh, is reachable um, from uh, the initial condition f in time t, if uh, there exists a control in L2 such that we can steer the initial condition f to the final state g in time t. So you start from f and uh, with a good control we, we finish in g in time t. And the reachable set is uh, all the reachable function from f in time t. 
And uh, the problem is, can we describe the reachable set? So, um, okay, I will first give some known results. And uh, the first one is, uh, is abuse. Uh, because of the smoothing effect, uh, we cannot reach every uh, function in this sobel space. This means that the reachable space is strictly smaller than the sobel space. And uh, in particular, this implies that the heat equation is not exactly controllable. The second uh, result is a, is a classical one. The heat equation is near controllable in any time. So in the one dimensional case, uh, it has been proved by uh, Fatorini and uh, Russian. And this means that you can steer every function uh, from an, uh, in any initial condition f in the sublet space to zero in any time. And uh, this implies two big uh, consequences for the, for the reachable space. The first one is that the reachable space does not depend on the initial condition. So you can take uh, f to be 0. And uh, the reachable set is, uh, is a linear space. And the second one is that the reachable space does not depend on time. It has been proved by uh, Fatorini for the equation and by Seidman uh, for um, all linear time invariant uh, PDE, uh, which is null controllable in any time. OK, uh, after this uh, result of uh, Fatorini and Rochelle, uh, there were a lot of uh, partial results increasing the class of uh, reachable functions. Uh, but the, the biggest uh, progress uh, have been made, been made uh, recent, uh, recently. Uh, so I will write R for the reachable space uh, because it, 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 not, it does not depend on F and on time. And uh, so recently, uh, Martin Rosier and Rouchon uh, proved that the um, reachable states, uh, which are defined on zero pi, can be uh, extended uh, holomorphically to, to this square d. And uh, conversely, uh, a result of uh, Dardy and uh, Hervé Doza, uh, they prove that uh, if you take uh, a, bigger, a bigger square, the epsilon, uh, the function which are holomorphic on this square can be rich. So uh, this proves that uh, in fact, the reachable space is, is a space of holomorphic function on this square d. And uh, the question is, uh, which space? Which space of analytic function on this square d? So uh, I will give you some definition of uh, analytic function spaces. The first one is the Bergman space. So it's a space uh, of function which are holomorphic on the domain and uh, LP. And the second one is, is a smear of space. So a function is in this space if uh, it is holomorphic on the, on the domain. And uh, if there exists a sequence of rectifiable Jordan curves, which tend to the boundary and uh, such that this this thing is uh, is finite. In fact, it's a, a kind of uh, L infinity LP norm. Okay, and if I take omega to be the, the unit disk, uh, we obtain the classical R D space of the unit disk. And uh, for the for the unit disk, in fact, we can choose the, the curves to be the circle of uh, radius R. And uh, we obtain uh, an L infinity LP norm, uh, LP on the circle and L infinity on the radius. 
So with th these definitions, I can give the other theorem of uh, Hartmann, Kelly, and Tuxnak. So they prove that the reachable space is between these two spaces of uh, analytic functions. So the Smirnov space of the of the square and the Bergman space of the of the square, and they prove that the the left inclusion is uh, is strict. They also made a conjecture. So they conjecture that the reachable space uh, is equal to the Bergman space of the the square. So. Uh, we denote uh, by delta uh, the blue the blue angular sector, so it's a right angle sector, and the the yellow one is a pi minus delta. It's just uh, the the symmetric. And my first theorem uh, is the following: the reachable space. Uh, is equal to uh, the sum of uh, these two Bergman space, the first Bergman space of, uh, on the, the first sector and the, the second Bergman space on the second sector, the yellow sector. And uh, now uh, the question is, uh, if we want to solve the conjecture, uh, to prove the, the conjecture, we have to to know if uh, this sum uh, is equal to the Bergman space of the square. So, in fact, the question is a complex analysis question. I will give uh, some ideas of, uh, for this proof, so for this theorem. So, uh, in fact, Pelé, uh, Normand, and Tuchnak, uh, Prove the, this theorem later with another method, but uh, I will give uh, my method. So we take the y to be the solution uh, of the lit equation uh, with uh, f equals to zero because uh, it does not depend on the initial condition. And uh, we can write the solution at time t uh, in this way. So I we we can write the solution in this way. So the first method is uh, uh, you decompose the solution in on a Fourier basis and you apply the Poisson summation formula. And the second way to obtain this uh, equality is uh, to use a method of images. And you obtain directly this this, this this equality. And the the important point in this equality is that the we we make the the heat kernel appear here. And if you if you watch uh, these terms, in fact, two uh, m pi is a uh, is uh, far away from zero pi when m is different of zero so uh, when m is different uh, uh, of zero in these two terms the the terms are very re regular so we can just see the the term with m equals to zero and this permits to, to write our solution in this way. So we have the two main parts here, which are the zero term in these two sum, and the two rest, R1 and R2, uh, which are very uh, regular. And uh, we have just to we have just to describe the range of, of these two operators. So uh, in fact, the second operator, this one, uh, is just the the first one with uh, with this translation, and uh, in fact, it, it's just a, a symmetry. So we have to describe uh, the range of uh, this operator in order to to describe the reachable space, 
And uh, in fact, I, I want to point out that uh, these terms is just the solution of uh, the integration on the half line zero infinity with the uh, boundary control in zero uh, given by u zero. So uh, describing the, the range of this operator, I can I can give the reachable space. So in fact, the story it's not the end of the story, but uh, it's the main idea in order to to prove this theorem, and uh, we we can finish with uh, a Paley-Wiener type theorem. Uh, this Paley-Wiener type theorem, which sends uh, this uh, weighted L two space uh, in the Bergman space of uh, the right half, uh, the the right half plane, because in fact uh, this operator is. Uh, is a Laplace type transform. So. Okay, so uh, I will come back to to this conjecture and this theorem. So we want to to know if this sum is equals to this Bergman space. And uh, if you if you see this sum, in fact. Uh, the intersection of the of the two sectors uh, is uh, the square. So we can, in fact, uh, generalize the question. And so the question is a separation of singular singularities uh, problem. Is the following? Uh, if I uh, if I have two domain omega one and uh, omega two uh, in the complex plane uh, C with non-empty intersection uh, and the function which is holomorphic uh, on this intersection, uh, can I have uh, two functions f one holomorphic in the on the first domain and f two on the second domain such, such that f uh, is equals to f one plus f two. And uh, in fact, the answer is yes. And uh, so it's uh, yes for every domain omega one and omega two and uh, for every every function f. But we can uh, ask the same question for uh, Banner spaces of analytic functions. So if we have a Banner space of analytic functions, uh, or a fresh space of analytic function or another class of analytic function on a domain. And uh, the question is, uh, is uh, the, the space on the intersection the sum of the two of the banner space? Um, for um, H infinity, which is the space of uh, bounded holomorphic function, uh, there are some works, and uh, in, fa in fact, uh, very precise work. And uh, on uh, the smear of space too. But in this talk, uh, we are interested in, in the Bergman space, AP. And uh, so I will give some result on this uh, space. The first one, uh, is just uh, using the same uh, the same idea uh, than in the classical theorem. So in this theorem, in the modern proof of this theorem, we uh, just uh, use uh, a partition of unity, and uh, then we uh, uh, regularize the the two function in order to have holomorphic function. In our case, if we try to do the same thing, in fact, we have to 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 give this assumption. So, uh, if this distance is strictly positive, we have the separation of singularities. Uh, the, the intersection has to be bounded. Okay. Um, and the main main tool uh, is uh, the Hormander type LP estimate for the Debye equation. 
So now all the results are complex analysis results. Um, the second theorem is a theorem without this uh, extra assumptions. So uh, if you take two half plane, uh, so the intersection is a sector, and uh, the question is, uh, can I decompose my sector uh, with this two half plane? And the answer is yes. So we have the separation of singularities for, for these two half planes. And now the, the, the main tools are reproducing kernel, uh, reproducing kernel identity, in fact, the Bergman projection and the conformal mapping. Uh, another result which uh, follows from the the previous uh, theorem is uh, on polygon. So if you take a polygon, uh, you want to decompose it uh, uh, from uh, from its side, its side. So uh, you have the, the half planes, the n half planes, and uh, you can see the half planes uh, um, with the side, so every side uh, follow from a, an half plane, and uh, the theorem uh, gives the possibility to decompose the Bergman space of the, the polygon uh, in uh, n Bergman space of uh, of the half plane. And uh, the corollary is a uh, uh, the Bergman space of the square is just the sum of these two Bergman space. And so uh, since uh, this sum is uh, equal to the reachable space, the reachable space is equal to the Bergman space of the square D. So uh, how it works, uh, you take the, the square, you decompose it uh, following the, its sides, and uh, so you have uh, this kind of sums uh, on the on the half planes, and um, now you glue together uh, these two sides with uh, the theorem two on uh, angular sectors. So you glue to together these two sides, and uh, you glue together these two sides, and you obtain these two sectors. And so we, ha we have this CRM, which, uh, which give an exact solution to the reachable space problem. The reachable space of the integration with uh, boundary control, the one-dimensional integration, uh, is uh, the Bergman space of the square, of this square. This square of, uh, with one diagonal is zero pi. Uh, in fact, we obtain uh, another result, a more general result uh, for the separations of singularities. So uh, I give you the, the result. Uh, you take uh, two domains which are convex and uh, with non-empty and the bounded uh, intersection. And uh, you, you allow the, the domain to, to you allow the, their boundaries to, to meet only on a finite, a finite number of uh, points and curves. So here, the boundaries meet uh, in two points. So uh, we are in the, in the hypothesis of the theorem. And in this case, um, we, we have the, the separation of singularity theorem. OK. I will talk now about the reachable space of another parabolic equation, uh, namely the Hermit integration. So uh, we replace the, the Laplacian uh, by the harmonic oscillator, which is here. And uh, we take uh, again uh, this equation on uh, zero pi. Uh, so the one-dimensional Hermit heat equation with, with uh, 
directly boundary control at both ends. And uh, so we denote by RHH uh, its uh, reachable space. And the first result on the reachable space, on this reachable space, is given by, by Camille Laurent and uh, Lionel Rosier. In fact, it's a general result on semi-linear semi uh, uh, para parabolic equations. And they proved that the, the functions which are holomorphic on a certain disk, which contains uh, D, are reachable. Our result on this uh, reachable space is the following. Uh, in fact, uh, we can prove the same inclusion uh, than for the heat equation. So the reachable space uh, for the Hermit heat equation is included in the Bergman space of the, of the disk. And uh, now I will finish with uh, some perspectives. So um, we can, to go further, we can uh, find the reachable space of the Hermit heat equation. So in fact, we have some par partial uh, converse inclusion, but we have not exactly the the reachable space of the Hermit heat equation. So we have to to work a little more to, to obtain uh, exactly a description of uh, this uh, reachable space. Uh, another question is, in fact, the reachable space is not the Bergman space of the square. In fact, we can identify the, the Bergman space of the square uh, to this reachable space, but the function in the, in the reachable space are defined on zero pi. So, we want to, to identify uh, testing on uh, the real line uh, if the function is in the Bergman space or not. So uh, the question is, uh, can we identify the trace of the Bergman space just testing on the real line? So it's uh, again a complex analysis question, but uh, I think uh, it, it can be it can be used uh, in control theory. Uh, we can uh, ask for more gen uh, more inputs like uh, L infinity control uh, or Jevre type control. We can uh, try to to have the, the same result for internal control, uh, like uh, maybe a point internal control. Uh, we can try in higher dimensions. Uh, in some particular geometries. And uh, finally, we can uh, use uh, this result to, as an in order to applicate it to, to nonlinear equations. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting topic. Uh, are there any questions or suggestions? From the... uh, yes, I have one. Yes, please. Uh, so when you're talking about the trace question of, uh, so you want uh, like upper inequality, like bounded Bergman space, L2 norm on the square by the norm on the real line? So your question is, uh, uh, can we obtain an estimate uh, between the, the norm on the Bergman space and the norm on the real line? But in fact, we have to, we have to find the, the good norm on the real line in order to identify the, the, the two space, the space of, on the real line and the space on the square. So, in fact, it's the, the difficult question. Okay. Please, uh, Jean-Pierre Puel, please. Yes, uh, 
I have a, a simple question. What ha do you know what happens when uh, you have only one control on one side, for example, u naught and not u or u pi zero? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. In fact, uh, uh, all these questions are, are known. Uh, I just uh, talked about uh, Dirichlet control, but uh, we know the, the solution for Neumann control or for only one boundary control. So for Neumann control, uh, it's no, no. Uh, the... Yeah, yeah. Say only, only one control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. So... Uh, for Neumann control, it's uh, the Dirichlet uh, uh, space of the square. That is the function uh, uh, with uh, the derivative in the Bergman space. And for only one control, you obtain the Bergman space of uh, uh, a square, uh, which is uh, the square with, uh, with diagonal uh, minus pi pi. And uh, with... Um, with an even sym symmetry. So, in fact, you extend your function uh, uh, by, uh, by parity and uh, you obtain the, the Bergman space of uh, the square uh, with diagonal minus pi pi uh, with, with this parity. Okay, okay, thank you. Is in the back. Yes, um, thank you very much for this nice talk. So yes, I have a question. Um, I have some, something I have not understood. Um, how do you obtain uh, the result for LP control, for instance, P uh, different from two? Okay. In fact, uh, I don't, uh, you, okay. Maybe you are talking about this control. This yes. uh, result, okay. In fact, I I don't have the result exactly, but and uh, I I didn't give the result. But when you see these two operator, they are Laplace type transforms, and so you have a kind of Palevinner type theorem like this. So. In, in this case, the, the, the Palevinner type uh, theorem is uh, exact in the sense uh, that uh, it's an isometrical isomorphism here. But you have uh, the same kind of result for, for LP with uh, uh, Laplace transform, which is not, uh, which is not uh, unitary like this. So uh, you you have uh, some partial result in, in this case too. Okay. Okay, thank you. Are there any other question or comment, Enrique? Uh, yes, uh, well, before, uh, thank you very much. It was, it was very interesting and very well presented. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, from the practical viewpoint, uh, how do you do when you when you want to reach uh, exactly? Uh, how do you have an idea from the proof uh, in order to construct a control uh, that makes the work? In fact, okay, thank you. In fact, it's a, it's a good question. With our method, it's uh, maybe it's uh, you can do it, but I think it's very very difficult uh, but uh, from the work for example of uh, Lionel Rosy and uh, Martin and Rouchon um, you can reach the the Gevre type uh, function uh, with a control uh, an explicit control so you can choose uh, the good control if your function is uh, uh, regular enough uh, on a space uh, uh, a little more larger, like a, a disk uh, which contains the, the square. So if uh, your uh, function to, to reach is uh, of a uh, Gevre type on this, on this disk, you can reach it uh, with a good control. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Somebody else? Okay, if not, thank you very much for your nice talk. And thank you. Thank you again. Are very interesting. And see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye.